So my friends, welcome back to the channel. Always in series about Kotlin for beginners, we are going to understand the concept of Kotlin coroutines. Let's get started. So what is a Kotlin coroutine? Always, as I said, you have the internet connection, you can learn on your own. But let's try to find things out. First, let's search for coroutines. So first of all, coroutines is not something specific to Kotlin. If you go here to the Wikipedia, for example, and you try to search, like coroutines are computer program components that generalize subroutines. That's the concept of subroutines. So the coroutines meaning like co, co, and routines or functions or execution block. So this term was coined like in 1958 and it was applied to assembly programs. As you can see, this is pretty old, but Kotlin generalized this concept. All right, so let's take a look at what is Kotlin here. For example, and let me check an image. I saw a pretty image here. I will show it to you so you can understand basically what we are doing. So first of all, what is Kotlin coroutine? A coroutine is an instance of suspendable computation. What does it mean, suspendable computation? It's that we can start it and we can pause it. That's the main thing. So you can think of it as it's similar to a thread, but it's not a thread. It's like multiple coroutines can run on thread. That's one thing. And it takes a block of code that runs concurrently as the rest of the code. As they said, it is conceptually similar to a thread in the sense that it takes a block of code that runs concurrently with the rest of the code. So it is concurrently. That's, that's the aspect in which it is similar to, to a thread. So it is kind of lightweight thread. But the important thing, it is suspendable computation. That's the definition of coroutine. It is suspendable computation because this is a critical part. Now, if you go back to the image I just wanted to show you here, like sometimes when you call a function, when you call a simple function, you call it the function executes completely and then go back. Now, in a coroutine, it's different. When you define and call a coroutine, it's run on separate thread and it will can run, it can suspend, it can run. And then basically, let's say that we are running on Android and there is some extra work need to be done by the thread running the coroutine. We can pause that coroutine and resume our work in the call then maybe we can go back to the coroutine, run it, and so on. So this is the difference, the main difference between normal functions and our coroutines. It is suspendable. So if you want to define a suspendable block, let's say that I want to run like addition, okay? And this addition needs to be run like a suspendable thing. It's not like a big work, but let's try to use that example. X, for example, it's an end, and Y, it's an end, like that. And this will return an end, for example. We want this to be suspended. So what we have to do is just to prefix it with suspend. Like, what does it mean? This suspend means that this function is a computation and we can suspend that computation. That's the idea. Now, here, for example, I can just return x plus y and let's pretend that it is taking some time. So I can call something called delay. Let me just put some number here. This is a suspendable function also. As you can see here, suspend function call. Like this one is a suspend function call. It can block and can resume. If you go here, you will see that is a suspend function. All right. Now, if I call this addition from here, I can't. Why? Because as the error say here, suspend function addition should be called from coroutine, from a coroutine or another suspend function. So that's the idea. We call this suspend function from the suspend function, but we can't call this unless from a coroutine. So we can put something here. You can call it like following using this block, run blocking. This will run a coroutine scope. It will give us a coroutine scope in which we can run the following. So let's pretend that I'm printing this one. Hello. This is after calling this and printing this one. Which one do you think we get called first? It's 15 and then hello. Why? Because this is this is run blocking. It means that it will block here until this finish. But you can launch it in split in another way. You can use something called global scope and launch it like that. If you run it like that, well, it will print hello and stop because it stopped directly. It didn't wait for that. Let's just wait for that like for some, I don't know, for three seconds or six seconds. As you can see, this will be concurrent. Hello, then we will see the 15, then it will stop. That's just because this is a main function and it will stop directly after this one. This launch block will launch a coroutine. You can specify the type of thread or the pool of thread in which the coroutine can suspend and resume. So here you can specify something called dispatcher. For dispatcher, there is this main, IO, default, and compile. This main refer to the main thread, Kotlin or in Android. So you need to be aware of that. And you can use it basically also in IO thread. This is pool of thread specified for IO computations. Like if you run, it should be sure that you won't be running this unless 
in an IO thread proof. So you can change this one, like let's say sometimes, I don't know, this is just an imaginary situation in Kotlin, for example, or in Android, like you are doing some computation and then you are setting something to a text view, for example. You can't set a text view or view components from an IO thread, right? You have to be on the main thread. So what you can do in here in the Kubernetes scope, you can switch the scope of Kubernetes to run only on main thread, for example, using something called with context. Here with context, you can do the following. And you can specify which one I want dispatchers to be on the main, like, and you can run your text view dot set something. So you can wait for this result while the result, something like that, and use that result here. Result and put it in the text view, for example. So this is something related to coroutines. We can do a lot of uh, things about coroutines. There is job, there is async, there is deferred thing. This is just an introduction to learn the concept of coroutines. What is a Kotlin coroutine? Basically, there is, as I said, there is something called job. For example, the result of this launch will give you a job. So with using this job, you can cancel and join. Like this is something specific to threads. So you need to, to know this concept to learn it. We'll be talking about jobs and specific things of coroutines if you want so. Let me know in the comments below. But here, the main idea is that using this kind of thing, for example, let's say that you have something here that repeats every, for example, 10 seconds or five seconds. Let's say it is an image analyzer and you want to analyze an image and apply a filter for it continuously, for example. Like using this one, you have to defer it into like this kind of dispatcher IO. But basically, let's say that the user exit or stop in some kind. You can cancel this routine using this one. So this is kind of example of how to use Kotlin job things. So this is in a nutshell, what is Kotlin routines? As I said, Kotlin routines, like the definition, as I said, the definition, let me go back here. Let me go back here. This is a suspendable function. The main idea about Kotlin coroutines, as I said, it is a suspendable function. It can suspend and resume. That's the main idea. And also something maybe I didn't mention is that it may suspend on its execution on one thread and resume it on another thread. For example, in Android, like when using a Realm database, there is this kind of thread safety. When you create a Realm object in one specific thread, you have to keep using it from that specific thread. And when using Kotlin coroutines, it violates that thing because a coroutine can launch on one thread and be on another thread. So here you may define it to use a specific pool of thread that it is one thread on. So there is this kind of flexibility, of course, you can use, but you need to understand this concept. It may suspend on its execution on one thread and resume on another. So this is basic definition of Kotlin coroutines. I hope you understand it. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as always and see you in the next videos. Salam alaikum.